Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you are new to my channel, welcome. Today is going to be my three and four week update from recovering from a hysterectomy surgery. If you have not seen the first few videos, make sure you go back and watch them. I will link them all down below. I discussed in the last video that things have really just kind of like gone very badly in my life, and I've been dealing with a lot of emotional distress, and just there's been a lot. And so, I tried to be as thorough as possible while going through all that, while trying to, you know, deal with my mental health and everything like that, but I think that I took enough notes to still give you like a thorough kind of idea of the recovery, so we are going to jump right into that right now. So in week three, I recall week three being the hardest in terms of recovery that I had had up to that point. And I don't know if that was just when the body kind of started to settle in um, and you start to feel that stuff naturally. I don't know if it was all of the emotional distress that I was going through, if it was the two things combined. But week three, just in terms of pain, was definitely the most severe. I was feeling all kinds of like pulls and you know tugging and pinching and just, if I tried to do too much, I could feel it all. I would be very fatigued. By that point, I was already off of all medication. I stopped taking any kind of pain pill, Tylenol, Percocet, any of that. I just was not up to taking, like being on a schedule to take medication. So I was taking my prenatal vitamin every day and then I was continuing kind of irregularly on the stool softeners. So I would say maybe in that third week I took stool softeners three days out of that week. But I definitely wanted to keep with that just to keep things moving and not put any strain on my body, but every other medication I was off completely besides those two things. Now also in week three I discussed previously that because of the stuff that I was dealing with, I just felt like I had to get back on a normal routine. So as I mentioned before, I was just doing things that I shouldn't have been doing, a lot of bending, a lot of squatting. And it was also in that third week that because I was doing all that stuff, I was reminded that I needed to take a step back and I needed to be careful about what I was doing because I started feeling, again, I mentioned like pooling sensations on like the side of my core, but I was also feeling like my bladder was dropping out of my vagina. And it wasn't, it wasn't like super a super intense feeling, but like I just had that feeling that anytime I did too much, it felt like things were trying to drop. And in my mind, that was a huge red flag because that stuff can happen. If you do too much too soon, stitches can come undone, things can fall, and I did not want that because that would be, you know, an extra surgery, complications I didn't want. So I had to keep reminding myself to take a step back. But it was definitely a bizarre feeling, just feeling like my insides were starting to try to like fall out. So anytime I, anytime I felt that, like I said, I just took a step back and once I decided to kind of like be more intentional about what I was doing and putting that focus back on the recovery, I stopped feeling those things all together. Because I was having all these new feelings in week three with the pain and the pool, like the dropping sensation, I decided that I needed to go back on bed rest and I needed to occasionally take Tylenol again. I don't recall at this point how much Tylenol I took, but I would guess maybe like two days um, because I wasn't having any pain, but I was definitely, like I said, experiencing just a lot of stress and a lot of tension and just a lot going on in my life and I didn't want to feel that extra like discomfort. So I probably took Tylenol two days out of that week, but I put myself back on bed rest. So I started spending a lot more time in the bed. I just woke up later. Um, I Well, I couldn't wake up later because the kids went to school, but when I dropped them off at school, I would come back, get in bed, relax, like not do anything to stimulate my brain. Literally just lay there and scroll through Instagram and Facebook and doing things that I felt like were kind of like mind numbers and didn't make me feel any kind of way about feeling like a failure or I need to do this or I need to do that. Um, night times went back to being the same with the kids and my husband. You know, I would do a certain thing. I would do things at the end of the night that I needed to do. And then I would say, I'm going to bed. You guys are on your own. It was just one of those things where I wanted to make sure, like, even though I wasn't necessarily focusing on my body recovering, I wasn't doing anything to maybe assist it, I also wanted to make sure that I wasn't taking a step back. So I was being mindful of what I was putting my body through. The end of week three, I went to my three week post-op appointment and this was a super quick appointment. Again, my doctor is two, a little over two hours away. So I made that drive, I got in the office, they took me back immediately. He took one little glimpse, one little glimpse, one little glimpse 
up my JJ, and that was it. He said, you're good to go, come back at six weeks. So basically, I think what I recall, what he was looking at is he was making sure that nothing again was like falling out, making sure there was no prolapse bladder. So he took a very quick look. He gave me the okay. Um, he didn't, we didn't really say much at that appointment. You know, he um, asked me if I had any questions and he could tell that I was off. He could tell something was wrong with me. He asked if I was okay, if I was dealing with pain, um, if I was tired. Like I, he said, I can see that you're off, what's going on? And I just told him that it's been a very, very stressful time in my life and I'm dealing with a lot emotionally and I don't know if that contributes to like the pains in my core. He said everything that I was feeling was perfectly normal, that everything was healing fine, there was no worries, and that at six weeks we would come back, check everything, and then discuss getting the clear for certain things. So again, week three was just the week that I feel like everything happened. Week three was when it was like everything from this surgery accumulated and I started feeling everything. So here I put that I had swelly belly again, which I believe I discussed last week, but I had swelly belly. I was just constantly, my, my belly was swollen. I had fatigue, I was very tired, which again comes with the thing I told you where I decided to put like myself back on bed rest, I was doing too much, I was feeling very tired, very fatigued, just very run down emotionally, physically, I just felt awful. Um, and then I was feeling hunger all the time. At first I felt nothing, I didn't have any appetite just because of the stresses in my life. But then it just started to feel like anytime I did eat, it wasn't really like holding me over. And a lot of that was just personal choices on my end because I emotionally am not at a place where I'm wanting to spend all this time in the kitchen. So I'm definitely not, and at that point was not eating enough, not eating, just not eating often enough, not eating enough food period. But when I was eating, I was trying to get things out of the house that were healthy. I was trying to eat smoothies. And then another thing that happened in week three that I think is worth mentioning because this is really hit or miss with people and it, it, it's very dependent on the type of surgery you had, the type of recovery you had. But my sex drive came back in week three like full force. It was at week three that my body just, you know, as a, as a woman, as a busy woman, a wife, a mother, like we have so much going on. Yes, I have sex with my husband. We are a very intimate couple. This is something that's normal for us, but I don't necessarily like crave it all the time. My body doesn't feel like it needs that. And I don't know if a lot of that is just from, you know, having a husband that was in the military. I kind of learned to shut that off and kind of like let it take a back seat. But week three, it came in strong and it was like my body just needed that. And of course, you can't have sex because that's just a no-no. I mean, sometimes at week six you are cleared. I, I would say more times than not at week six you are cleared, but definitely not at week three. But it's something worth noting that I wanted to let you know. Some people have the complete opposite. They lack nothing. They don't have a sex drive. It also depends on what's left in your body. It's just very... Uh, it's determined by... It's so many factors. There are so many variables, but that was my experience. And then for week three, I put overall that it was a very fake it till you make it type scenario. It was just a lot of doing things to get through the week, doing things that emotionally and physically I didn't feel like I was up to it, but I had to do it because life doesn't just quit. It was the end of the school year. Things were kind of like wrapping up in sports. And so it was a lot of doing things that I had no desire in doing, no energy in doing. Um, I just, it, I had to get through it. That's all I did. I just faked it till I made it. <laughs> till I made it. Faked it till I make it. You know what I'm trying to say. Moving on to week four. So by week four, I still, up to that point, had no bleeding. I have had those times when if I wore something that was too tight or if I did too much, I had like a little bit of wipe of not even blood. like. It wasn't like you could see blood when it was white, but it was almost like just like a pinkish tint. But that always happened just that one time while I was doing too much or while I was wearing something tight and then it didn't happen again. So no bleeding up to this point. By week four, because I was just having so much frustration with not eating and not having food and not being able to go shopping because I would just go out and buy whatever I could to eat in the moment, I finally went shopping with the help of my sister-in-law, which was 
I didn't even write this down on the list, but that was an experience because I can't even tell you how useless you feel when you can't even do your grocery shopping. I mean, it felt so bizarre to be in the grocery store to to pick you know the foods that i want or the things that were too heavy for my sister-in-law to grab for her to put it in the cart move stuff around for her to push the cart for her to bag the items to bring them in the house it just felt so like i want to say like dehumanizing it felt i felt awful i didn't want somebody doing that for me it was uncomfortable but I needed food in the house. I needed to eat more for recovery purposes. My kids needed to eat. So that is something we did on week four. But again, I do not recommend doing that on your own. Just the cart alone, because I had gone four, five, four weeks at that point without grocery shopping, would have been so heavy, could have done damage. But that's something we did on week four. By week four, actually by week three, I didn't mention it, the glue on my incisions was starting, starting to pull off and it was starting to grab onto my clothes, which is uncomfortable because those are, you know, incisions. And so anytime it would pull, I would feel like a little bit of, not discomfort, but irritation. So at my three week post-op appointment, the doctor said I could start to, you know, rub around that area, take it off. So I would take my loofah, take some soap, and I would scrub it. And eventually by the end of week four, all of the glue was off completely. And now I am just left with the incisions on my core with nothing over it. And this is where week four became fun. And this is, it's so bizarre. But by week four, I was experiencing body odor. Like, I'm just gonna put it out there. I was experiencing, like if I went outside or I sat on the couch or even like this, if I'm sitting here with my arms next to my body, my armpits would just start to smell. I started to have a, but not, I don't, that's a little dramatic. I started to smell like a normal person. If you're working out, if you go to the gym, it just became easier for my body to react and my body to have a scent. I have since learned, and I don't want to discuss like the medical aspect to, cause, because to be honest with you, I haven't done enough research and I don't know enough to speak on it. But I guess essentially, if you keep your ovaries, your ovaries can go to sleep. So they almost like deactivate for a period of time from what I understand because before your ovaries seem, they receive their primary blood source from the uterus. And when you remove the uterus, everything is kind of redirected and the body has to wake back up and learn or how, not learn, but how to, they ha has to learn to be more efficient with providing blood to the ovaries. So, you know, your ovaries control so much of your body and control your hormones. And when those things are off, your body starts to react. I have had acne, um, which you can't see because of the lighting here, but I've had acne. I have had just body odor. Um, so my body is definitely like experiencing those changes. But from what I understand, they should kind of like reactivate and all of that should go back to normal. But I will definitely keep you in the loop of that, even if it means doing a video, you know, six months later and letting you know how that goes. But um, yeah, that's where we're at with that. I just have had body odor and it's, it's kind of uncomfortable and dealing with stuff emotionally, I'm already going through a lot of problems I've never had before, just perceptions of myself that I'm very insecure about and just feeling generally not good about myself. And so when you add on that, it's just really kind of been kind of been emotionally trying for me. It's like, you know, my husband will come to give me a hug and I'm like, please don't, I don't want, I smell. And he's like, you don't smell, like you're fine. But it's just my own kind of insecurities and working through emotional distress and having those things layered on top of that. It's a lot to deal with at one time. And then lastly, we drove out of town to go to Dave and Buster's a couple weeks ago or a couple weekends ago, and we were only there for three hours. I did not do much. Honestly, the only thing I did to put any like pressure on my core, I played a game with my daughter where you're standing still, but you're like pushing buttons to when the lights come on, you push it. Um, so, you know, you don't realize it, but that does work a little bit because you're kind of moving and, and twisting a little bit. And also I sat on the back of a motorcycle with my son with my legs on the ground helping him to do like this. The next day I wrote that I was nauseous, um, sore back, tired legs, and minor soreness in the core. It started with feeling my legs being tired at Dave & Buster's three hours in when we were about to leave. 
Um, and then the next day it was just feeling my whole body hurt. Kind of felt like I gently got hit by a car. I just felt nauseous. I didn't feel good and I could definitely tell that I had put my body through something, even if it was so minor. It was something so little, but it had such a big impact because your body is recovering from a major surgery. Like it is a big deal and we forget that because we feel okay. Um, but yeah, it just was kind of a reminder like, hey, you are not healed. So that was my week three and week four update. I will come back and do another update probably week five and then I'll do week six separately. Um, but if you guys have any questions, please be sure to leave them down below. I have been trying to keep up a little bit with the blog, which is doing more detailed posts, kind of breaking down what is what. So be sure to go and check that out if you don't necessarily want to watch an entire video. Thank you guys again for sticking with me, especially through this very trying time when I'm just dealing with stuff. Um, but I really appreciate it and I hope this is helping someone. This is why I'm continuing to do this because I want to be that voice or that resource for someone else who is scared or anxious about this or going through the recovery and feeling alone. This is for you. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.